Was Andrew Tate really hacked? On one hand, we have massive news outlets like New York Post and Wired Magazine claiming that Andrew Tate was hacked and suffered a massive data breach where hackers allegedly posted private information of nearly 800,000 members of the Andrew Tate organization. But on the other hand, Andrew Tate himself posted on a tweet today that there was actually no hack. Now I'm really concerned because I've been in the cybersecurity industry for nearly two decades and I've worked on pretty high profile cases both with government and the private sector. And you have to understand this. Hacking or the leakage of information of nearly 800,000 users is a very serious matter because guess who make use of this information that just went public? It's organized crime. They used hack data to target vulnerable individuals and they also use the money gained from hacking to fund further criminal activities. Therefore, we need to be very careful when we report on this very sensitive matter. So let's get to the bottom of this, starting with the massive media outlet Wired Magazine. So in their article, they say king of toxic masculinity gets hacked. This is already not a good start. If you want to report on a serious matter, you cannot use sensationalist language like king of toxic masculinity. This is not the time or the place for it. So according to Wired Magazine, hacktivists announced their breach of the platform where Andrew Tate distributed his courses or training material. They say that the hacking group went into one of their meetings and they posted emojis. And they said that the emojis include a transgender pride flag, a feminist flag, and an AI generated image of Tate wrapped in a rainbow flag. So far, this looks more like trolling or innocent fun than a hack. And then Wired Magazine says there is nearly 700,000 usernames reported including messages from 221 public and 395 private chat services. So according to this Wired magazine, there has been usernames that were hacked or posted to a public forum and that the hacking group allegedly went into one of their live streams and posted emojis. So one thing I need to clarify is that when we say something was hacked, this usually entail either a disruption of service, for example, bringing that Android Tate website completely down in which case it would have been a denial of service attack or where hackers were able to steal information, usually valuable information or what we refer to as privately identifiable information. Now, usernames, these are not privately identifiable information because just knowing someone's username will not really reveal their identity if they don't want their identity revealed. Now, this also applies to email addresses. Usually when a hack happens, what gets stolen is passwords or financial data or even addresses. This doesn't seem to to be the case so far. However, when I look at the New York Post article, there is one extra piece of information that I couldn't find in the Wired magazine. In the New York Post article, it says that there is nearly 300,000 email addresses of members who are no longer members have been leaked by the hackers. Now again, email addresses alone are not privately identifiable information. Therefore, we cannot really say that this was a hack because more often than not, email addresses could be public information. My email address is not a secret. And frankly, speaking, if you're using an online service, you should use a burner email address anyway. Now, again, what I really don't like about these articles is there is an over sensationalism in the languages used. And I still don't understand how is this a hack. Now, if we look at Andrew Tate's tweet from today, Andrew Tate basically says that those chats and that live stream was actually public and available to all members. He essentially says that those alleged hackers were, were someone who just purchased a member and decided to throw some emojis. Now, again, I have no way of very verifying that. However, just from this public information available to me, I cannot call it a hack. And I take issues with the New York Post and Wired Magazine for taking this lightly. Because guess what? If this was a real hack and member information were leaked, those members become a target. Even if those magazines don't like Andrew Tate, which doesn't really concern me, but we need to be really careful when we report on hacking matters. Because if this is a real hack, then it becomes a law enforcement matter. Because like I said, money and data that get exposed by hackers are almost always used by organized crime. So therefore, or in conclusion, I personally don't think that this is a hack unless I see a proof that tells me otherwise. And if you actually want to learn cybersecurity and have a chance at working in the industry, then I highly recommend you check this video. And I'll see you there.